to First Tap this Thursday morning. We thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're going to switch gears now and, and go to uh, uh, one of the events in the last couple of weeks that has uh, engaged our attention in the media and certainly in the national community. The, the if event I'm speaking about is uh, the baby switched at birth. Uh, one born to an Afro Trinidadian family, the other to an East Indian family, one from Tobago, one from Trinidad. And, and uh, the psychological e effects that this has, we have reports n not confirmed that one of the mothers is having difficulty bonding and one would imagine that after an event like that you would bond with your baby even though it may not be your biological child and then you have to give up this child that you've bonded with and form a new bond with a new, with, with a new baby. Uh, in studio is psychologist Daryl Joseph. Daryl, good morning. Hey, morning Paul. The diet is working. I should, <laughs> I should assume this diet. Uh, that is a, under any circumstance, a very traumatic event. Extremely. Because on one hand, you go home with your baby. You, you, you think, well, this is my baby. You start the natural bonding process. Mm -hmm. Couple months after, or weeks after, you hear there's a bit of mix up. Mm -hmm. So uh, you've already formed a bond with this That's baby, right. biological That's right. or not. Mm -hmm. it, uh, and you have to give up this child now because you, the child, and the child also goes through the some The child is going through trauma Let's as well. That's that. right. Okay, yeah. Um, as you quite correctly said, it's both its mother, its child, and its, well, family members as well, people mm -hmm. who also would be close to, the, mm -hmm. to both parties. But um, that bond that um, is formed between a mother and a newborn is probably the strongest of human bonds mm -hmm. and to have to break that at that early stage you know there, there is, there's fewer more difficult um, things that a mother could go through or even a baby at that stage it's um you're basically taking a bond that is not just physical it's you know it goes way beyond the emotional physical. it's emotional it's spiritual it's everything it's everything, it's, it's everything taken together right so when you break that bond you know it's it's almost it's a death of sorts all right so you have to go through a grieving process exactly all right so the mother will go through something that resembles the grieving process because her relationship with that child has come to an end okay and it is a real relationship how does that now impact the formation of a bond with a child you rationally know is now your biological child mm -hmm. uh, while still having to grieve over this this, the, the relationship you had yes. with the other child? Well, that can be extremely difficult. Um, of course, it's going to depend on the individual, all right? Because, I mean, each person's resilience and their ability to adapt and change to a circumstance is different. Mm -hmm. And there's wide variance in how much ability people have. But it's going to be difficult because, remember, there's going to be a certain amount of resentment that the parent, that the mother would have to deal with. The idea that her child has now been taken away and this child is now hers. She has to overcome the idea that that bond and that attachment that she had before was not the real attachment, quote unquote, mm -hmm. and that she has to now do it over again. All right? So there's resentment, there's going to be a lot of anger and animosity towards the people who caused it in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, and then we know that, you know, early motherhood is a trying time by itself, huh? Yeah. All right? Um, I was looking at something, I was reading something last night. It was saying that up to 25% of new mothers experience postpartum depression 25 percent up to 25 one quarter up to 25 okay and but it presents even, in different ways in each mother that's right but even those who don't experience postpartum depression according to the established diagnostic criteria experience some sort of baby blues let's call it as an adjustment period that's right it's an adjustment period you know, your body is going through changes nothing kind of looks or works or feels the same and it's very difficult there's loss of sleep you know it's a whole adjustment mm. all right so it's a difficult period and uh, let's add the race component because it's a factor yes and and people talk uh, and you know what Trinidadians can be oh gosh, uh, yeah. on one hand uh, a baby is born of East Indian parents somebody starts to get suspicious this child don't look like me the neighborhood starts to talk there's that psychological additional pressure and then yes. and on the other side the same thing uh, an Afro Trinidadian baby comes in oh, oh that baby looking like a, like it's not uh, uh, from our family so yes. and suspicions start to tear at the, the mother father relationships now absolutely in, yes. before the revelation is made absolutely and and that is a serious consideration because now ma the man is saying well I wonder if that child is mine. A family member says, that child ain't yours. Our family have this kind of ears, well, this kind of toes. And it starts to wear on okay. the mother-father relationship. All right. Now, I have four children with my wife. 
and I have never questioned my wife, I've never questioned that I am the father of any of these children. But as a human being, I have always been relieved when you see the child for the first time and something looks and familiar. And it looks like you. It, it, there's mm. just something naturally human about that. And it's not a matter some, of... some part of your family exactly, or some, your yeah. father, your and uncle. It's not a matter of, you know, you're insecure or you're questioning. It's just a normal human response, all right? Mm. So if you, you know, as a father, for example, you see this child for the first time and... Hello. There's nothing about this child except my family. Something is going to... While you're supporting your wife, you have underlying suspicions. Yeah, a red flag will go off And it starts mind. to tear the relationship and the trust is It will. It definitely will. And I mean, at that stage, you know, you don't want to maybe pressure her too much because you don't know what she's going through. But at the same time, you have these questions. And remember, it's a period where there's a loss of intimacy and as well. And your family. And your family. Because it's a wider ecosystem. That's right. That's right. So, so and as I was saying, it's a period when there's usually a loss of intimacy. You know, there's a recovery period mm -hmm. for the mother. So, and that loss of intimacy physically, along coupled with a, a lack of trust, you know, it can really, as you say, tear away the relationship. Now, we've spoken about the adults in some detail. Mm -hmm. A child bonds by smell. Yes. This child has bonded by smell yes. and sound. Yes. And, and, and uh, interaction with yes, one mother. That's right. And it's now torn away from that mother mm -hmm. and put into a new situation mm -hmm. with a different smell, mm -hmm. different noises, different environmental stimuli. Mm -hmm. That child is traumatized. Yes. Now, I can't remember from, the, from what I've read what the age, like exactly how old the child is, all right? Um, depending upon how old the child is, you know, it will have an impact upon how easy it will be for the child to adjust, all right? But um, yes, you know, it. it that there would be a period of adjustment for the child, quite correctly, because um, there's a lot of studies now about, uh, under the banner of what we call attachment theory, which talks about the importance of the early bond between mother and child, and phys the physical bond, touch. And the impact of attachment, or breaking of attachment, or lack of attachment, on later stages of development. Yes, particularly, and this is very important to Trinidad and Tobago, the development of empathy. Okay? Attachment theory talks about the bonding between a child and a mother and the, the, the touch and, 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 and so forth and how that develop or that begins developing empathy within the child. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now empathy as we know is a person's ability to acknowledge and feel the emotions of another person. All right? When Which goes to, in some aspects, mm -hmm. deviant behavior. Exactly. And, and people exactly. don't understand that when, in most of the research done, mm -hmm. when you see young uh, adolescent people undergoing some level of truancy, mm -hmm. uh, antisocial behavior, yes. even as, and we're not saying these two babies in any way are doomed to, to be criminals, and that we're not correct. saying that. that but correct. when research has been done, uh, no mother, no warmth, no connection, and you, and you, you train some, you, you, you track some criminals, you realize that they have no empathy because they very have no often. bond with their mother or very that often. bond has been broken. Very often, very often it can take place, yeah. all right? So if you interfere, if you tamper with that bonding process those first few weeks, you may have an impact upon that child's ability to be empathetic later on. And as we know, especially in the context of Trinidad and Tobago, you, you really don't want to tamper with that too much because we have way too much of that happening. And right also now. the child's ability to form relationships, strong relationships exactly. later on. Yeah, because you know, friendships. Exactly. You have to have a sense of empathy to form a true friendship. Otherwise, you'll just be using people around you for your own self gratification. And you wouldn't truly be sharing yourself with other people. What would be the process or, or your advice to either mother and father and family in terms of this new situation that they're thrust into? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, like everything else, you know, you have to first of all um, assess exactly where you're at. Now, there's a particular marker that we use to determine whether somebody is, um, let's say, going into clinical depression or mm -hmm. not, and it is whether how well the person can function. And by function, I mean how well the person can do the things that they normally have to do. So mm -hmm. taking care of the child, taking care of themselves, the household, etc. Et how much it disrupts your ordinary... Exactly. If your normal routine is disrupted and you can't do it, something is wrong, you probably need outside assistance, right? In most mm -hmm. cases with postpartum depression, for example, um, in other countries, they actually in some countries, like in Canada, they screen mothers for it eh, mm -hmm. routinely, yeah. all right? And if it's found that a person is um, experiencing it or is at risk for it, they provide counseling services to assist that person, whether it is in a group with similar mothers or whether it is individually one-on-one, -on -one, but there's some kind of counseling assistance because usually that's the best way of treating with is it. Is it? a healthy suggestion that the mothers find a way or the families mm -hmm. find a way to maintain contact with the child that's now been passed over to their rightful biological parents. I don't know if that's a good idea right now. 
simply because the mother, the family needs to bond with the actual, with the biological child. And similar to, I mean, it's not quite the same thing, but it's like, um, uh, two but I love that child. And I, I care know, about that I child. know, but it's like I, okay, I, just, I, I, you will miss the child. Let me make a comparison. You know? Two people in a relationship who break up. Now you want to move on, but you want to still call the person and be their friend. You can't. Well, it depends <laughs> on who dumped who. <laughs> The, the dumper wants to be friends, but we'll the dumpee does we'll not be want friends. to be friends. But these right? children didn't dump anybody, no. and, and the mothers no. have formed a bond, and they yeah. wonder. I, I think it's a natural thing. Yeah. How is the child doing? I know it's. I rationally know I it's not my my child biologically. Yeah. But I care about this child okay. because I've taken care of this child from day one. I don't think there's a problem maybe with finding out how the child is going. That's all well and good. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about visiting the child and holding the child, no, that's I don't a problem. Think, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea right now at all. How should the family provide support? Well, you know, because, because it's a difficult period now. It is, it is, it yeah. is. It has to be extremely understanding, all right? The mothers, her moods will fluctuate. Um, they need to be, um, you know, she's not going to be herself, all right? So the normal things that you might depend on her to do and to be there for, you know, you have to give her a little bit of leeway and, you know, step up and do things for her that ordinarily other members of the family wouldn't. Now, let's talk about the, the father relationship. Yes. Uh, and. How open should they be in that discussion? Uh, you know, mm. some father, mothers, did, did you realize it wasn't your child? Were there <laughs> trust issues arising? Or yeah. should they just shut up and say, you know what, I didn't know, I love you, No. let's continue? No, you know what, um, I am a firm advocate of openness in relationships. But isn't there I something believe... like too much openness? Sometimes I didn't trust you, I was wondering if you were unfaithful to me, and you say, how could you think I would be unfaithful to you? And Listen, it, if... and it, it may raise, it open different issues in that relationship. Depending upon the quality of the relationship to begin with, you would be able to determine whether there is, as you were saying, too much openness, too much honesty or not, all right? My take on it is, from the beginning, if all things work the way it's supposed to, there should be complete openness and complete honesty. But even the best of relationships, yes. I mean, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. they, you know, they will say, mommy, no, daddy, not sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it is a matter of trust. It mm -hmm. speaks to, to men. Yes. It's like the ultimate betrayal. I have a friend, a uh, pretty young guy who just went through uh, a situation where he found out his four, five-year-old daughter yeah. is not his what daughter, is? and he'd been betrayed by, by the young lady. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, him and his mother and father, the grandparents, are going through an extremely difficult mm -hmm. time now because, mm -hmm. I mean, he has exposed this child to all his friends and family. Yeah, yeah. He's taken care of this child for five, six years. Yeah. And now, uh, because of a simple blood test, because mm -hmm. something went wrong with the child, mm -hmm. he now has to decide whether he's going to continue a relationship right. because he has a bond with the young girl that, that, who he thought was his daughter yes. or just cut ties. Yes. Well, they have, I mean, okay, well, that's out in the open now, all right? Um, look, um, secrets in a relationship are never good, all right? It's, I mean, people do it because they, you know, they, they figure that if it gets out, it will have a negative impact upon the relationship. But just the effort required to keep things secret Too much work. is an impediment to the relationship progressing, you know, in a positive way in itself, mm -hmm. you know? So it's not something that should ever be encouraged. In our last six yeah, prognosis sure. of both these families, uh, it is, I mean, it's recoverable. Yeah, it is recoverable. Um, it definitely is. But like I said, um, a lot of understanding, a lot of care, particularly for the mothers at this point in time. The fathers will need it as well, but you know, there's a point in time when daddy have to, when husband and father has to step up and be the man mm. in the household, okay? And right now is time for the mothers in particular to have their recovery. So they're gonna need a lot of support, a lot of monitoring and watching them to see how they're functioning. Mm -hmm. And if things are beginning to go too negative, proactive, step forward, you know, get some and assistance. And of course, look, look at Secret. the children because they too have the adjustment period. That's right. In yeah. this whole thing. Daryl, thanks for being with thanks. us. All right, uh, we'll be talking to psychologist Daryl Joseph about the psychological effects of being switched at birth and reunited with your biological parents. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we focus on the TNT Police Service. News is next with Larry Lumsden in for Werner Barth, who's on vacation. Stay with us.